Hi, today I'm going to cover how to build a sensor for your mailbox that will inform you in Home Assistant when mail has been delivered with an optional uh, voice notification via Google Home devices. Hi, welcome to Resin Chem Tech. I don't know about where you live, but where I live, the mail delivery from day to day is extremely inconsistent. Sometimes the mail may run at 10 in the morning, other days it may be after 6 or 7 p.m. So we get a lot of deliveries and I don't like the idea of my delivery sitting in the mailbox or making multiple trips to the mailbox to see if it's arrived yet. So I decided to build my own mailbox sensor. Now there are commercial options available, but if you've seen any of my other videos, I like to keep everything local. I wanted to be notified via Google and within Home Assistant every time that the mail had been delivered. So hang around, I'm going to cover the parts, the assembly, the installation, and a little bit of the code on how I integrated this into Home Assistant. Okay, here are the parts we're going to be using to build our sensor. First up is the ESP32 development board. The ESP32 was selected for its ability to go into deep sleep and draw very, very little battery power when it's idle. It also has the ability that you can wake it up through a number of the different GPIO pins. And so what we'll be doing is taking a read sensor inside of our mailbox, one side connected to the lid, and every time that the door of the mailbox opens, it will send a signal to the ESP32. It will wake it up and allow it to send data over to Home Assistant so we know when the mail is delivered. Speaking of the batteries, I tried a lot of different batteries, nine volts, double A's, but ended up settling on these 7.4 volt lithium ion batteries. These are really designed uh, for remote control cars, but a couple of things I liked about them. One is the fact that it has these two connectors. So this connector here is where you plug it in to recharge the battery, and this is your power out. So by taking this clip off the end and just adding a couple of spade connectors, it allows me to easily plug the battery in uh, to our board here, charge and when time comes to replace the battery simply unplug this one take the one that's been sitting on the charger plug it in and replace it but th these being 7.4 volt batteries which gives me longer battery life but the ESP32 runs off of 5 volts so the one thing we have to do is take this little tiny see if I can get it up here and get it in focus so that you can see it um, it's a 5 volt step up step down uh, voltage regulator so it will take anything from, I believe, 2.7 volts up to 11.8 volts, and we'll output a, a constant 5-volt signal. So we can power this 5-volt ESP32 off these 7.4-volt batteries. But to keep an eye on, on the battery and know when it's time to replace it, we're going to use a 10K and a 15K resistor and create a voltage divider that will feed into an analog pin here on the ESP32, and we'll be able to output... Uh, the battery voltage to Home Assistant as well, and be able to, to keep track uh, when it comes time to replace the battery. This little tiny thing is, is really optional. It's just a simple little on-off switch. It allows me to kill the power, power to the board when it comes time to switch the battery. Not really necessary, but I, I did want to put that uh, in there. We'll be putting all the electronics here on a, an Electro Cookie prototype board. And the only other thing are a couple of 3D printed enclosures, one for the, the board here and another one for the battery. And you can see I've already put the spade clips in here for connecting the battery. And I uh, actually have already put the little on off switch in here as well. Uh, I'll leave not only the parts list, but a full schematic uh, down in the video description or links to them down in the video description. But I'm gonna stop now because nobody wants to sit and watch me solder all this. When I get the board all put together, we'll come back and take a look at it, and I'll explain a little bit more about how it's wired and how it works. Okay, here we are with everything assembled onto the proto board. It took about an hour or so to get everything soldered, but my soldering skills aren't, aren't top-notch. But a brief description, here are your incoming power, uh, positive and negative from your battery, 7.4 volt. This is our 5-volt uh, step up step down regulator so it's going to feed five volts out to feed the five volts in to power the ESP32. Coming out here from uh, GPIO 13 
and ground wire, these yellow and blue are going to feed out to our read sensor, our magnetic read sensor installed in the mailbox itself. So again, when the read sensor is opened or the mailbox door is opened, it's going to feed into this pin and it's going to wake up the ESP32. You'll notice a couple of uh, small resistors here. It's a 15K resistor and a 10K resistor. This is going to create a voltage divider. It's going to feed in here to an analog pin, which I believe is uh, GPIO 34, I think, uh, on this particular board. But it is an analog pin. Now, part of the problem is here that, again, we've got 7.4 volts coming in, actually about 8 volts when the battery is fully charged. But the GPIO pins can only accept a maximum input of 3.3 volts, which is why we had to build this, this voltage divider so that no more than 3.3 volts is fed to this pin. Otherwise, you get a nice little uh, magic puff of blue smoke uh, that will ruin your board. So we'll talk about how we scale that to get the actual voltage uh, using ESP Home in a little bit. But uh, that's the basic wiring. It's really pretty simple. There is nothing on the bottom other than just the normal solder joints. So next we're going to go ahead and hook this thing up to battery. We'll connect these two wires together with a alligator clips and we'll simulate the, the box opening and, and do a quick bench test here before we install it in the mailbox. Okay, at this point we've got the battery hooked up and we basically have the uh, two alligator clips here simulating that the, that the mailbox door is currently closed. So this would be your, your read switch here. And you'll notice in, in Home Assistant right now, it shows that the sensor status is disconnected and there's no mail. So what we're going to do now is we're basically going to simulate uh, opening of the mailbox door, which is uh, basically the, the read switch being opened. So we'll open that. Mail goes into the mailbox and then the mailbox door again closes. You've got mail. And you heard that uh, almost right away that uh, the ESP32 woke up. We heard the Google Home announcement and you can also see in Home Assistant that it shows that mail has been delivered and this, this sensor status is connected. Also during this time when it's connected, it's also sending an update in terms of the battery uh, voltage, which right now is, is basically a full battery based on our scale of showing 7.87 volts from the 7.4 battery. So we'll let that uh, sensor status uh, disconnect here in a minute, and which will show that the ESP32 is going back to sleep. It's currently set at 90 seconds, which is probably too long. The, the least amount of time you can have the battery open, the better. Um, but I had some issues with it taking some time to, to connect to Wi-Fi because it is outside, uh, removed from the house. Here inside, it connects to the Wi-Fi very quickly. Uh, at one time, I cut it down to 45 seconds, and it occasionally was, was missing sending an update status. So I found 90 seconds for me. If you can get away with shorter, that, that would be better because you're just going to save that much more battery. While we're waiting on that, I will also mention here that the one thing that I did do uh, that I didn't cover in the assembly, right here is an LED light. And if you look at this picture, you'll notice that that LED light is lit up all the time whenever connected to power, even when it's in deep sleep. So A, I don't need to be draining the battery any more than necessary, even though that LED is probably not pulling much in terms of current, but also it gave a nice red glow underneath the mailbox which at night, which I didn't need. So basically just desoldered uh, this LED and removed it so that it wouldn't light at night. Okay, you can now see that our uh, sensor status has been disconnected. It's showing that mail's been delivered. So now I go out, pick up the mail. Once again, I open up the mailbox and again, close the lid. And you'll see now the sensor status once again shows connected, but this time it knew that I was picking up the mail. So it basically reset the mail status to being no mail. And once again, after 90 seconds, the, uh, so the ESP will go back to sleep and go into low power consumption mode. So everything seems to be working at this point. So the next step is to go out and install it in the mailbox. Then we'll take a look at the code that, that drives this. So let's cover the final install. First, we'll take a look at the read switch. You can see here, one piece is attached to the door, the wire piece is attached here, and the wiring 
runs across the top and actually out through a pre-existing hole in the back. Having the wiring at the top uh, helps avoid any snagging of packages uh, when things are inserted and removed from the mailbox. Here you can see that wiring coming out of the hole in the bottom of the mailbox actually feeds through a gap that was already there. And then when we look down here at the bottom, we can see our battery pack and our control board, a couple of 3D printed uh, brackets allow me to slide both of these devices in and out. When it com comes time to replace the battery, this slides out, open, pop out the battery, pop, pop in a new one, and slide it back into place. Now we'll cover the code that makes all this work. First, it will be the code that we upload to the ESP32. For that, we're going to be using ESP Home. If you don't have ESP Home in your Home Assistant installation, I'll leave a link down below in the video description to the ESP uh, home, home page, and they've got a really good article on getting started with ESP Home and Home Assistant. Once you have it installed, it's pretty straightforward. We're going to create a new node, and we simply need to give that a, a, a unique name, so we're just going to call this Mailbox Sensor. We will select the board type that we're using. In this case, we're going to be using an ESP32. And then we simply have to enter in our Wi-Fi information and password and set up an optional over-the-air uh, update passwords. If you later do over-the-air updates, you can have an optional password here. Click Next, and then basically we're ready to submit this and create our node. What ESP Home does for you automatically, let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see it, it's going to create all of this top part for you. It's really going to set it up so it will connect to your Wi-Fi. So it's going to, this whole top part will be created for you automatically, all the way down through this OTA password. Then we have to define sensors and other features we want on our board. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to define our deep sleep for our board. We're telling ESP Home that when the board wakes up, we want it to run for 90 seconds. Again, as I described earlier, you might be able to get away with a shorter amount of time, which will help conserve battery life. For me, I needed, needed the board to be awake for about 90 seconds. We're telling it to watch GPIO pin 13, which is what's connected to our read switch. That's what's going to cause the ESP32 to wake up. In my case, I'm having it invert the wake up. Uh, basically, we have that pin pulled high. When we open the mailbox door, the pin's going to be pulled low. So that's, that's the reverse of what it normally looks for, so we're inverting, inverting that wake up. And we're going to define a couple of binary sensors. The first one is just the status. So this will report back whether the board is currently awake and connected or idle, asleep, and disconnected. Then we'll define a sensor for the door itself, a binary sensor. Uh, again, this is on the read switch, GPIO 13. And basically just saying that uh, we'll report back whether the mailbox is opened or closed. Then we'll define our battery sensor. This will probably take a little bit of experimentation on your part depending on your particular battery. But if you recall, the reason we had to do a voltage divider is that the input pin will only take up to 3.3 volts even though this battery might be outputting 8 volts. So what we're doing here is providing a calibration. I will note that this is not ever going to be exact. You're never going to get it to be precise. If you put this thing on a, on a multimeter and measure the voltage of the battery, this is never really going to match. But what you're really looking for here is to be able to monitor a voltage to know when it drops to a point where you need or want to replace the battery. So you have to experiment around a little bit with these values, but it will report back. In my case, I look for once the voltage drops below 6 volts, it's time for me to replace the battery. The last thing we're going to add is a connection to our MQTT broker. The reason we need this will become apparent when we start looking at the Home Assistant side of things, but when the uh, ESP32 goes to sleep, and if you restart Home Assistant, a number of these values are going to show up as unavailable. So by adding MQTT, ESP Home will publish the values of, of all of the sensors to MQTT with a retained status. So that way we can always get the latest value that was returned from the board, whether the board is currently idle or awake. Once all this is, is done, you will upload this to your board. I recommend that you upload this to your ESP32 board before you assemble it. If you have already assembled your board, the one thing you 
want to be sure that you do is disconnect the board from the battery before you plug it into USB connected to the computer. You never want to connect two power sources to your board at the same time. So once this is uploaded, we'll take a look at what is automatically created for you in Home Assistant. So once we've uploaded our code to our ESP32 board and rebooted the board, Home Assistant will automatically detect a new integration that's available and prompt you to add it. When you add this to Home Assistant, it's going to automatically create those sensors for you that we defined in our ESP Home node. If you look here at the sensors, you'll see the binary sensor mailbox was, was created for us. That is the door sensor, whether the door is off or closed or on open. It created our sensor status connection. Again, off is idle or disconnected, on is active and connected. And it created our sensor for our battery voltage. Now there's a couple of other sensors here, I'm going to talk about those in a second. But as I mentioned, if, you, if I were to reboot Home Assistant right now, this first sensor, which is the door sensor, and the battery voltage are both going to show as unavailable. That's because when re Home Assistant restarts, it doesn't have a connection and no way to pull those values. That's why we're going to use MQTT to be able to retain this value and pull it back up. If I look at MQTT here real quick, Sorry, this is kind of small. I don't have a, don't know a good way to blow this up, but you'll see that it also automatically created our sensors and our mailbox battery state in MQTT with a retained flag, which means they'll always be available. So we can always have Home Assistant go look at these values, and these values will update anytime the board powers up and sends its data. So again, a couple of other sensors I'm going to talk about next that we created. First is the the battery MQTT value, and then we're also going to create a binary sensor uh, to indicate when the mailbox battery is low. Now I will say that uh, you can create these sensors through the, the newer UI helpers. Uh, I'm uh, a YAML guy from the start. I've never used the UI for, for automations or to create helpers, so I'm going to show the YAML that I used, but again you can create these yourself through the, the UI helper function in Home Assistant. First we're going to we'll take a look at the uh, retained battery voltage. So again, all I'm going to do is go out and look at MQTT and pull in that retained value in here. Uh, and again, just going to convert that uh, to a floating value of the, of the volts. So that will always be available. It'll, it'll stay there. Again, once the board comes alive and re transmits its current voltage, this value will update as well. Other uh, sensors I'm going to create is a binary sensor. It's really just going to uh, be a true-false value as to whether the battery is above or below 6 volts. So I can use that to key myself, to send myself a notification that, hey, it's time to change the battery. Okay, there's one more entity we're going to create before we take a look at the scripts and automation. And this is an input boolean. Again, this can be created through the UI helpers. It doesn't have to be, be done in YAML, but I do everything in YAML. So it's really just a, a, a boolean value, true or false, saying whether the mail has been delivered. Uh, when it's picked up, this value will be set back to false. So with those entities, we're ready to create a couple of scripts that will run, from be called from the automations, when we have the triggers that the mailbox has, has opened. We take a look at these scripts. The first one will be called when we determine that the mail has been delivered. First thing it's going to do is turn on that input boolean that we just def defined so we know, yep, the mail's been delivered. Uh, you can ignore this condition. Uh, all of my voice notifications, I, I have other automations that will turn off voice notifications, for example, at night, or they can be snoozed. All I'm doing here is just checking that uh, are the voice notifications currently enabled for mail delivery. The next thing it does, there are a number of different ways to accomplish this. I'm using a media player because what I've actually done is I've defined five different uh, notifications uh, for mail delivery, just so I'm not hearing the same thing. Every, they're all kind of funny and, and quirky. They're the AOL and other things. And so what I've done is I've actually created five MP3s uh, labeled one through five in my www folder in Home Assistant. Then what I do here is I basically call a random, uh, one of those five random uh, MP3s and play it. Again, you could use uh, the Google Say, text-to-speech, a lot of different ways to do this, but it's going to announce it on all seven or so 
uh, of my Google Home devices throughout the house, it's going to play that notification. The other one is when the mail is picked up script. All we're going to do in the mail picked up is we're really just going to reset that input Boolean and turn it back off. Basically, it says the mail has been picked up. So with those scripts and those entities, we can now take a look at the automations. So the first one is mailbox activated. So this, this is going to run anytime that the ESP32 becomes activated and tells Home Assistant, hey, I've just, I just woke up. So we're looking when this goes from an off state to an on state. We're going to run a script. We're either going to run the mail delivered script or we're going to run the mail pickup script. And that's going to be based on whether our, our, that input Boolean is off or turned on. The only thing we're going to do here is we're really just going to make sure that we update that binary sensor uh, to let us know if the mailbox battery is low. And the only other automation here is again that low battery notification when the binary sensor that detected that is now true that the battery voltage is less than 6 volts is going to notify me on my phone with a message that the mailbox battery is low. So that's it for the scripts. Uh, everything, everything works really well. There are a lot of different ways to tackle this. Um, again, with how you want notifications. Maybe instead of voice notifications that the mail's picked up, you want to send a notification to your phone that the mail has, has been delivered. So a lot of different ways to tackle this. This is just the uh, approach that I took. So that's going to do it for this video. Uh, let me know by clicking the like button if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful. If you'd like to see more of my videos, click the subscribe button and click the bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I release a new video. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.